Overnight, Ukraine launched a significant aerial strike on Putin's forces, targeting occupied Crimea. According to local officials, the attack involved at least 21 drones. This is the second night in a row that Ukraine has launched such an attack. A day before, Kiev had launched as many as 75 drones in the direction of numerous locations in Russia. The strike was responsible for starting a fire at an oil refinery in the town of Twops, which is located in Russia, despite the fact that this assertion could not be substantiated, Russia asserted that the fire was caused by debris from a drone that had crashed. The attack on the Crimean port of Sevastopol, which took place on Monday night, occurred at the same time that the foreign minister of Volodymyr Zelensky began a rare four-day visit to China. During this visit, he will meet with his Chinese colleague Wang Yi. It will be Dmitry Kuleba's responsibility to present the state of affairs in Ukraine to Russia's most significant ally. During the visit, he stated that he would be discussing the restoration of peace, deepening our bilateral dialogue, expanding trade and economic cooperation. He also stated that he would be exploring these topics. Kiev's efforts to leverage private capital in order to finance its war against Russia have been bolstered by the announcement that Ukraine has reached an agreement with its creditors to restructure approximately $20 billion worth of debt. A music festival with 25,000 attendees is held in Kiev. Images showed festival-goers swarming to the stages as the capital of Ukraine played host to its largest music festival since the full-scale invasion. Since the invasion, the festival has been held. Sunday marked the beginning of the most important music festival in Ukraine, which is called Atlas United. Despite the fact that it did not have any of the conventionally well-known celebrities as headliners, Kasabian, the Chemical Brothers, and Liam Gallagher are among the previous participants, the concert was extremely well attended. It was held close to the retail center in Kiev so that spectators would have the opportunity to take refuge in the event that an air raid took place. The positions of the Prime Minister of Hungary will be evaluated by the EU's foreign ministers. Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister of Hungary, is scheduled to be evaluated by the foreign ministers of the European Union for his unacceptable position on the role of the Union in Ukraine, as well as his excursions to Russia and China. During the month of July, Hungary assumed the rotating presidency of the Union for a period of six months. Almost immediately after taking over, Hungary embarked on a peace mission to Moscow and Beijing, despite the fact that none of his EU partners were aware of his intentions or required him to carry out such a mission. In addition, he got out of a NATO summit early in order to meet with Donald Trump, who was the former president of the United States. He has been a harsh opponent of Western military assistance to Ukraine, and he has warm diplomatic connections with Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. On Monday, Josep Borrell, the president of the European Union's Department of Foreign Policy, stated that the decisions made by the Hungarian government were unacceptable. He went on to say, we will discuss what has occurred and the positions taken by the government of Hungary during this meeting. The attendance of ministers at an informal meeting that will take place in Budapest at the end of August has been urged to be boycotted or downgraded by a few of the member states of the European Union EU, who would like the bloc to demonstrate a more firm position on Hungary. In her remarks to the press upon her arrival in Brussels, the German Minister of Foreign Affairs Annalena Baerbock stated that Borrell was the representative of the European Union's foreign policy for the ministers, and that it was not surprising that the ego trips had irritated many. Peter Sajarto, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Hungary, made the following statement on Monday, For weeks now, the Brussels foreign bureaucracy and the leaders of some EU countries have been grinding their teeth over our peace mission, out of frustration, envy, and exposure of their failed strategy. The only thing that our friends in Brussels and throughout Europe have to offer us is a childish sit-in boycott and verbal blackmail. A Czech minister has stated that there will be an increase in the delivery of ammunition to Ukraine. Jan Lepavsky, the Czech Republic's Minister of Foreign Affairs, announced on Monday that a program that is being headed by the Czech Republic to purchase ammunition from all over the world for Ukraine will supply 100,000 rounds to the country in the months of July and August. The Czech Republic has been a staunch ally of Ukraine in its fight against Russian aggression, and it has been at the forefront of attempts to gather funds in order to increase the amount of ammunition and shells that are delivered to Kiev.
we are going to ship around 100,000 additional items during the months of July and August. Reporters in Brussels were informed by Mr. Lepavsky that these supplies will pick up speed beginning in September. The unwavering support that Biden has shown for Ukraine is praised by Zelensky. On the television program X, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expressed his admiration for Vice President Joe Biden's decision to withdraw from the campaign, which he described as a tough but strong decision. He also expressed his gratitude to Biden for his assistance in preventing Russian President Vladimir Putin from occupying our country. He stated in a post that Ukraine is grateful to President Biden for his unwavering support for Ukraine's fight for freedom, which, along with strong bipartisan support in the United States, has been and continues to be critical. He noted that this support has been and continues to be critical over the course of the past few years, President Biden has made a number of courageous choices, and these choices will be recognized as courageous actions taken in response to difficult circumstances. In addition, we admire the forceful decision that was made today. We shall be grateful for the leadership that President Biden has provided for all time that he supported our country during the most dramatic moment in history, assisted us in preventing Putin from occupying our country, and has continued to support us throughout this terrible war. The current situation in Ukraine and all of Europe is no less challenging, and we sincerely hope that America's continued strong leadership will prevent Russian evil from succeeding or making its aggression pay off. The highest-ranking diplomat from Ukraine will travel to China. On Tuesday, the highest-ranking diplomat of Ukraine will travel to China at the invitation of Beijing. The purpose of these discussions, according to Kiev, would be to discuss ways to bring an end to Russia's war in Ukraine and to discuss the possibility of China playing a role in achieving a solution. Minister of Foreign Affairs Dmitry Kuleba will meet with Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs Wang Yi to discuss bilateral relations during his trip to China, which will take place from July 23 to July 25, according to the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. According to a statement that was published on the website of the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the primary focus of the discussion will be the effort to find ways to put an end to Russia's aggression and the potential role that China could play in achieving a peaceful and equitable peace. Kaleba's visit will take place from the 23rd to the 26th of July, according to the Chinese announcement, which supplied less information. China is often seen as being close to the Kremlin, with which Beijing established a no-limits partnership in 2022, just days before Russia invaded Ukraine. This trip is very uncommon because of this strong relationship between China and the Kremlin. Kiev has been cautious in its criticism of Beijing, despite the fact that the world's second-largest economy has not condemned the Russian invasion and has assisted Russia in maintaining its war economy. While this is going on, China has stated that its relations with Russia are built on the principle of non-alignment and do not target any third country. As Russian forces continue to move on the town of Pokrovsk, they are launching relentless attacks. The highest-ranking commander in Ukraine stated on Monday that Russian forces were launching unrelenting attacks in an attempt to move towards the town of Pokrovsk, which is located in the east and serves as a supply hub. Additionally, the commander stated that actively fighting was taking place along the whole front line. Colonel General Alexander Sersky issued a message from the Eastern Front, stating that the enemy continues to press through into Pokrovsk despite the fact that they have suffered a rather large number of casualties. Pokrovsk is located at an intersection of highways and a railway, which makes it a significant supply center for the military in the east. According to open-source intelligence battlefield maps, Pokrovsk is fewer than 15 miles away from area that is occupied by the Russian military. Mr. Sersky stated that, active combat operations of varying intensity are taking place along the entire front. However, he also mentioned that Russian forces were also attempting to capture floodplain islands close to the city of Kherson, which is located in the southern region of Ukraine.